So tell me, um, how did you hear about the festival and everything, and what made you decide to make it into a feature film? Well, you know, I worked on Web River Kings, a um, film we did in 1995, and it drew from much of the, the same footage. Um, so there we had a festival, we used small parts of it, and it always left me with the notion that there's this whole other movie that's just sort of like waiting to be born, you know, but it's, it was locked in a vault in New Jersey. So I carry that thought with me for whatever, uh, 10 years or approximately 10 years. Um, and then, you know, when James Brown passed away at the end of 2005, it just really occurred to me that no, now is the time we really have to to, uh, to to be serious now and get this together. So that was sort of the the impetus to actually move on. Although I always had the idea that I wanted to do something with it. How much footage was there for you to grab from? There was approximately 125 hours of film, you know, mm -hmm. um, 60 millimeter film. And, um, you know, we only used maybe 50 minutes of it in King. So if you think about it, it was a de minimis amount we actually used. So really it was basically like starting, um, starting almost fresh. And with a different orientation, you know, I wasn't looking to try to, 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 to get every last bit of Muhammad Ali or George Foreman in the film. So in fact, it was just a, a huge amount of a bounty to, to draw from. Um, so, you know, it was just a real process of how you wrestle it in the shape. It mm -hmm. took about two years of you know, screwing around. <laughs> this is your uh, directorial debut. Did you always, ever plan on, or did you always plan on it being a documentary? Or is that just kind of how the cards fell as the story? No, I didn't even plan on directing, <laughs> you know, frankly. Mm -hmm. It's just, uh, you know, I've been doing, in this last couple of years, I've done a number of documentaries. And for some reason I got into the documentary bug. Partly it's because I did a few features in a row that were uh, I really enjoyed them, but uh, not many people saw them, and uh, they were financially uh, disastrous. Um, so I couldn't uh, raise more money to do other features. Um, so I turned to documentaries, which were just smaller in scale and felt more media. Um, and it just, it just kind of worked out naturally. It's like, oh, okay, I want to do it. And I had a very, it's more like I looked at the material and I said, this is how I want to do it. Like I had a very clear idea of, of how to do it and knew I was able to do it, as opposed to I'm directing, what do I want to direct? You know mm -hmm. what I mean? It sort of rose more organically. As far as um, all the talent that's actually featured in the film, did you have any difficulty in getting uh, their approval or the rights in order to be able to use their face or anything in the feature? No, they all signed contracts. And oh, really? Before, yeah, fortunately. Um, so that's not a, that wasn't a problem or an issue. Um, the rights to the musical compositions, mm -hmm. Um, well, that was, it's not difficult, it's more like frustrating, it's more like, you know. <laughs> it has to be done. Yeah, it's like walking across a, a parking lot of Walmart in the summer on your bare feet, you know. It's not pleasant. <laughs> but eventually you get to the other side. Mm -hmm. yeah. What did you do in order to um, narrow down the number of songs that were actually performed at the festival? Were those personal favorites, or how did you pick those? It was a balance, you know, I just sort of, um, couple fold, you know, I picked the songs I liked. Mm -hmm. um, but I also wanted songs that were covered well photographically, so some things were covered less well, um, so I didn't use those. And then I wanted to create like a set, so they all work together, they kind of complement one another, and, and to make sure they were all pretty distinctive, you know, mm -hmm. to the extent possible. Some type of musical styles were more similar than others. So that's kind of how I came up with the mix, but it wasn't it wasn't overly formulaic. It was a little more intuitive, but I did have a few kind of rules that I set out for myself. Um, yeah, and then I, of course I used a lot of James Brown music. I did, but the, I cut some songs at the end. There was even more James Brown. <laughs> out of all the songs that are featured in the film, what would you consider your favorite outside of the film? Just yeah, yeah, one that you appreciate. Well, you know, it's funny because. I've been asked this question before, and I literally, I don't have an answer in the sense that they're all like, they're like all like my children, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like, how can you say you love one more than the other? And you know, I choose them all. So I chose them all. So there's a certain level that I, I like each and every one of them, um, and they're just so different, you know. I mean, I can look at like Bill the Will with his performance and just say, wow, that's like one of the most purest, most moving pieces of music I've ever heard, and then. James Brown, like the energy and the rhythms and 
the way the band is, the textures of the band, that's amazing. And then, you know, B.B. King, it just, it's enthralling. Mm -hmm. Listening to him play, and the African music is just so, you know, energetic and, and, you know, original, at least, you know, to my ear. And now, track, is there going to be a few added tracks that aren't actually in the film? From the f They're festival? very, you know, that's totally up to the soundtrack company. Uh, I've been happy with that. And, um, the tricky thing is normally on soundtracks they have like 12 songs. Yeah, that has to do with the way they pay mechanical royalties. You don't want to get too much or you, you dilute the royalties. You know, the royalties don't work the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so, you know, we'll see how that turns out. But you know, for me, the more, the more it gets out, the better, you know. What the effects the movie had on people that actually performed. Yeah. Just because of James Brown and her. I mean, you know. people have liked it. Uh, but I didn't show it to many people. Fred Wesley. I sent it to Bill Withers, but I haven't heard back about that. Big Black liked it, you know. I didn't talk to any of the Crusaders. I couldn't get in touch with B.B. King. So, the people have seen it like it. Stuart Levine has seen it. Mm -hmm. He liked it. He's really, he's a great guy. So, yeah, I think, I mean, his view was like, yeah, this is what we were there to do. You know, so that was like, for me, that's the highest it's accomplishment. Yeah. That's, you know, that's all I needed to hear. And then I'm like, that's not happening. And then, of course, getting distribution, having people like it, that, that's fantastic as well, but actually coming from him, that's really the whole story. Because in a way, that's my, with my sensibility, it's like, if the people who are there put it together, and the artists who perform, they can look at the film and say, yeah, that's me, that's why I am, that's what I wanted to say, that's how I wanted to perform, mm -hmm. you know. I've been depicted, you know, uh, well, that's the high point. You know? The uh, footage that you have of the actual you don't have any footage from the fight, but the of the fighters, you don't really have anything of George Foreman. Was there a reason for that, or is that just how the story kind of unfolded? Well, it's both. You know, George Foreman didn't only really tangentially related to the performers, at least on camera. Mm -hmm. I can't say we have it off camera. Um, there's actually one press conference where he's at, which is used in When We Were King, so it was a little awkward and it didn't really suit this film, you know. Um, what they're talking about, and you know, he didn't go to the concert, at least not that I saw, and he didn't really interact with people, so there really wasn't a place for him where Ali was quite different. I mean, not only did he interact with people, the performers and the people at the music festival all the time, but he, um, you know, it's just loquacious and larger than life uh, character, you know, I mean, anytime you had a camera, I'm sure he would be there talking. And you also have to remember that when the music festival came, right after George Foreman got cut, you know, George Swarm's eye got cut mm -hmm. a couple of days before, and they postponed the fight for six weeks. So, in a way, you know, that was a big blow to him. You know, it was a, it was a really, you know, they had already been in Zaire for a number of weeks, and I think they were ready to leave, to be honest. And then he gets cut, so they have to postpone, and it was a lot of tension and drama for him personally, and I don't think he wanted to be in public. In fact, yeah, there's a little bit of him public, I mean, as the, the um, the band-aid on his head at this press conference, but I don't think he said anything at the press conference that you said. The, uh, the concert took place in 1974, and um, so the music and everything definitely appeals to an older audience, but what are you hoping that younger college-age students um, will take from the feature after they see it? Yeah, you know, well, I hope, I think some of the music they'll know, you know, mm -hmm. like the James Brown, the BB King, and I think, you know, I'd hope that they'd be turned on to some of the uh, other types of music there, whether it's the African music or Crusaders, or um, you know the Fania All Stars, and you know one thing I think you see is that um, they are all fantastic musicians, and they are all great performers and entertainers. I mean, this is what they did. So, you know, it's been a long time since I've been in college, but I would hope that you know there would be some appeal just on that level, you know. Mm -hmm. And I just think it's uh, kind of inspiring, you know, what these, how these people are able to to make music and. You know, and that seems to translate, I have to say, like, people do.